Bridges, and I am with the Kids Club, and we are a pediatric medical facility here in town that operates and looks like a daycare. And we're able to care for medically fragile children um, or uh, because we're nurse staffed in each classroom. And one of the things that sets us apart from some other special needs daycares is uh, we are nurse staffed in each classroom, so we're able to care for almost any medical diagnosis that a child can have. Um, and that includes like epilepsy, heart issues, breathing issues, rare diseases, um, and, and things of that nature. And one of the other parts that, sep that separates us out from other daycares is that we are able to take ages birth to 21. Um, so th uh, you know, that's a great um, opportunity for kids that need um, maybe after school care, summertime care. Um, we're able to provide that. In fact, we're just gearing up for our, we're calling it summer camp right now at the mm -hmm. Kids Club. And um, it's going to have a, a very much a summer camp feel for the kiddos as they come in and um, a different theme each week and a lot of fun uh, field trips and special uh, um, guests coming in and working with the kids and a lot of activities like that. But the Kids Club um, is 100% uh, covered by Medicaid, which means that there are no costs to a family at all for their child to attend. As well, all five MCOs are included in that. So that really opens the door up for many families to be able to come in and utilize the services there at, at the Kids Club. We also offer free transportation within the Fayette County area. Um, we have several buses, so if a child needs transportation <clears throat> to and from their home, um, some of the kiddos we take to preschools in the morning, we're able to provide that. And of course there's a nurse on the bus with the kiddos, and um, they, we, we probably uh, provide transportation for about half our kids there. We also um, contract with APT, which are physical therapists, to provide therapy, physical therapy, occupational therapy, uh, speech therapy for the children as needed if that's part of their medical diagnosis. So that's a, a great benefit to the parents to not have an additional uh, visit to schedule, to not have to miss work for that or, or miss appointments, etc. <clears throat> we take care of that right there in the center. The therapists come in, take the child from the classroom, take them to our on-site uh, therapy room, work with the children and then bring them back to their classroom. So there's just so many benefits to the Kids Club um, in addition to um, having their medical needs cared for, of course, there's the socialization of being able to be with other children, you know, throughout the day. There's the um, the scheduled uh, medical care that they're giving if their medicine or their their monitoring needs to be done every two hours, three hours, etc. They're going to have that. So we find that kids become a lot healthier in many circumstances because of that regular. Um, attention that they're getting medically. So it has just great benefits all the way around here at the Kids Club. We're centrally located off Regency Road. I like to say if you know where Michael's Arts and Crafts are, is on Nicholasville Road, we sit right behind there. So it's a good location to just about anywhere in, Nicholas, or in Lexington um, for you to be able to access um, uh, the Kids Club there. So if you have any questions about it or if you know of a child that is birth to 21 and you need to return to the workforce um, or you need to go back to school or, or a family does anything like that, then this is an excellent place for you to look into. Give me a call. Give the center a call. It's very easy to get the referral process going. We don't have to have a doctor's recommendation, which is great. You can simply call the center. You can simply go online, begin the process, and, um, and that's all it takes to, to get a child enrolled or, or to start the process for that. So if you, um, like I said, have any questions at all, I'm going to leave some um, information up here, some brochures. It does have um, the website as well as the, the uh, main phone number down here. We do have one center in Lexington, three in Louisville, and then a couple lying out north and south from here in, um, in Kentucky. But feel free to look at this information here and give us a call. Are there any questions? Anybody? Anything? Is there a waiting list? There's no waiting list. So, so. There's no waiting list. Um, we are a medical facility, so basically we just raise our ratios. Okay. Um, we our uh, nurse nurse to child ratio is uh, one to six, and our caregiver to child ratio is one to three. So it's um, it's we have excellent ratios there, and like I said, there's a nurse that is um, yeah, placed in every classroom to care for these children. Mm -hmm.
Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for your time. I know we're getting ready to get on to the main event here. So, again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call. And thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. Now we have... I'm going to let that... Uh, Dave and Crystal Cardi are going to okay. talk about their family experiences. And I'm going to let them give their own bios, but okay. do a better job than I will, but thanks for coming, appreciate it. Sure. Hi, my name is Dave Cardi, and this is my wife, Crystal. Uh, we live in Lexington, been here since 2004, when our first child was born. We have three children. Our uh, oldest daughter is now a freshman at uh, Lafayette High School. Our uh, uh, middle child, our daughter, is at uh, Edith J. Middle School, and our son is at Garrett Morgan Elementary School. And, uh, what kind of brought us all into getting to know about this society and such is is our son. His name is Jacob. That's a recent picture of him right up there. And uh, he is seven years old now. And he is pretty severely on the autism spectrum. He has the ability to talk. He is uh, pretty much listed as nonverbal in the fact that he does not communicate. Well, that changed this morning. We've been that to our this morning. Yeah. So we've been to our ARC meeting this morning. So we're having like full autism day today. So uh, so they've, they've kind of changed that a little bit. But he speaks a lot about uh, in, in scripting when he talks and such. And, and we'll talk some about that. But uh, uh, just kind of take you back to the beginning a little bit of where, where things got started. I'll let, I'll let you jump in there. Okay. So, um, so his two older sisters, they're quite a bit older. He was uh, our surprise and has been a surprise ever since. <laughs> this is this is the beginning. Mm -hmm. So probably about a year, right after sh shots, single on camera, yeah. Uh, yeah. things changed. Everything changed. We went from a kid who was talking, engaged, active, smiling, playing with his sisters, to living in his own world. We couldn't even break the wall. So 15 month appointment, I said something's wrong. I'm an educator. He's an educator. Some, something's wrong. He's fine. His dad doesn't talk much. You'll hear him talk tonight, but he really doesn't talk much. <laughs> you know, his sisters were really. You worked with them so much. You were home. It's, he's fine. Okay. 18 month appointment. Something is wrong. He's not the same kid. So she finally was like, okay, I trust you. Let's fill this out. And she gave me this little checklist. And when I filled it out, she was like, something is wrong. And I was like, yeah, I told you. So um, they put us with first steps, which Lexington is so fortunate to have. I don't think anybody in here really qualifies for that. But if you're watching online and your kid's under three, Google it online, first steps. You can get medical care to come to your house. All those great things. Um, so we did speech and OT and all of those, those programs right in our own home so he was comfortable. So that was nice. And it was a sounding board for me because I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and then we just, they said, get on a list, you need to get him evaluated. But it was two years and three years and 18 months, so um, uh, somebody told me, well, EKU probably has a psychology center. And I called them, and they got us in, what, three or four months yeah, later? Good. It was really fast. Yeah. Um, we worked with students there and got a diagnosis probably about, it was two and a half, mm -hmm. two and a half, two and a half, two and three years. Um, and it was, even though you knew it was coming, it was devastating. Yeah. Um, but we just, it came with all those things. You need to do this. You need to do that. Um, at that point, they said he probably would never talk. We should probably look into institute. I mean, there was, it was a very severe diagnosis. I mean, he went from this engaged child that you see to you couldn't even get him to look at you. At EKU? Mm -hmm. so, and, and we wound up with first as mainly as a sensory they thought he had a sensory issue, which he did because he would run into walls. And, and he would, never even noticed. And he would bang his head on things. And he had, like, he, he just didn't seem to respond to pain at all. Yeah, res yeah respond to us, respond to his sisters, mm -hmm. respond to you, just everything flipped around. Mm -hmm. um, but probably, first I was so angry, but it was probably the best thing they ever said to give us that situation because I was determined to prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. So... That's a long time ago, but those are his big sisters. Yeah. And um, our oldest, to this day, she loves him. She'd fight for him, but she just can't find a way to connect with him. So if you have family members or you have siblings or whatever, it doesn't mean they don't love him, because I think she would fight somebody to the death for him, 
but to interact with him, it's just so awkward. And you can tell she feels awkward and he's not getting it, but they, she still tries. But the yeah. middle one, the one with the little bow in her hair, it's probably life-changing for her, don't you think? Mm -hmm. She, It's shaped her whole world to advocate for kids at school, to uh, want to teach him just constantly. Well, what's he working on at school? I want to work on it at home. And now she's to the point that she says, I think I want to do this forever. Oh, I talked to my, my teachers at school, and I think this is what I want to do. So when you stop and think, oh, this has been the worst thing, and it's so hard every day, if she can make a difference in 50 kids lives one day mm. it's completely worth it and she makes a difference in his life every day mm -hmm. wow. i mean she just she probably worries too much about him yeah. but she just she celebrates every victory too i will say on her wow. oldest though though she hasn't really been able to relate to her brother that much it really opened her eyes to want to find out more and she changed her electives in middle school on her own to volunteer in the special um, ed classrooms yeah. so she was with them uh a couple times a week and then when they all had their eighth grade graduation oh, and stuff, several Everybody of these kids came and, and were graduating too, and we got to meet all them. So that was, so she is yes. she really, I mean, there's a, there's a 15 versus seven year old, and he's That's more right. on a four, three year, four year three old, four year old level. level. So there's a huge age difference there. But. It's nothing, it's nothing, it's just funny how mm. they differently interact, and you think, it just kind of. To let everybody know, it's Obviously, not. No. It's not anything. It's her. She's. She has a huge heart too. Yeah. She just doesn't interact the same way. If that makes wow. sense. Mm -hmm. So that is their situation in our family. But I will say we have never had to. We talk to families a lot, and we've never had to deal um, with the resentment. Almost, if that makes sense. Like we can't do this because because there's a lot of things we can't do. We don't eat out. We don't go on your typical vacation. We don't go to Kings Island when everybody's going. You know, there's a lot of things that we try to make up for it, but they know the limitations of their brother, and there's not, we don't really hear that. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. it's, we're, wow. we're very fortunate with that. There's where, girls. where is he tonight? Where is he when you come to meetings? Um, he is with his grandparents. Okay. We have a hard time switching schedule. Yep. So we. that's why we said yes, film, because we watch online, because it's hard to bring him to a new place, be around new people, mm -hmm. all of that. It's just hard. So whenever we can get them to watch him. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad I can do this. Oh, so. yes. it works. Yeah. And these are so, so, just some examples of some other things he did yeah, way back when. Even back at this point when people were finding he was you know, being on his own a lot, being in his own bubble, I went and he got a haircut. He's only <laughs> ever had three uh, because about a year mm -hmm. after this, no more. We can't take him in at all. Can't even I, uh, go near. Uh, he has one oh. style of haircut. It's called the longest sheer things I could put on a buzzer <laughs> on one of those uh, groomers, and I just hold him down the best I can in the bathtub, and we just go to town until we get it done. And <laughs> what we have is what we have at the end. And so, uh, but and there, he just for some reason doesn't like to have his hair washed or anything. That's yeah. one thing he's just never really gotten over. We've had uh, big changes in, in food, too. When I was looking for some of these pictures, I, was, I couldn't believe this one existed. Because no, he's got a sucker in his it. mouth, one of those safety ones. He wouldn't come near that thing for anything at this Not point. Today. And uh, um, this is a, a kind of an example of when we take photographs, and you'll see pictures that we show you tonight of, of him smiling at the camera. And I... And I, I feel I want those pictures, but I also feel like we are like we are him. kidding yes. ourselves <laughs> and, and looking like back lie. because this is typically what a picture would be like. However, we have learned things like say the very his favorite words from a Dora episode or something, and you'll get that look up at you. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're out of the days of having the little disposable camera. You just hit that iPhone and go, bah, 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 bah. Yeah. and one of them's going to be there and looking at the camera. And so you know, then we junk all the rest of them. So we we do. Luckily, have I'm glad technology's come to where it is now, to where we can have those those pictures. But that's pretty much the reaction we would get a lot of times. And this is also symbolic of of the differences that we've gone to, because this would have been a time when he had no idea where he was or that anyone was near him. Um, so he was in the church play. He was a shepherd because he just sat up there and oh, did his wow. thing. Today we could never do that. Do we love that he'll interact with us? For sure. But he army crawls under the pews Everybody during church the church today. Was, was, <laughs> yeah. Shepard would have been taking the microphone today. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, there's there's always a give and take, we feel like. Uh, we've had a lot of changes in, in food where so many things.
things that we'll talk about uh, have gotten so much better. Food is one that's really gone downhill. Huh. Uh, he will not touch any of this kind of food anymore. He basically, oh, yeah. he loves a McDonald's cheeseburger. He likes it plain. Don't touch me. He will open it up. He will take the bottom bun. He will throw it down on the ground. He will eat the top bun, the cheese, and the burger. If they make it upside down, we return it and get one that they make right side up. You have to ask and, really nicely. You know, and they look at you like, really? Yes. yes. So, uh, oh, no. but, uh, wow. and you saw the first picture. He's skinny as a rail, but that's, thankfully he is what he is because of McDonald's cheeseburgers and such. But he, uh, he does like, he, he will in. And if you're going to find a fast food place that you're just going to be addicted McDonald's. to, McDonald's is a good one because they are absolutely everywhere, of course. Yes. But, uh. So, uh, McDonald's is, uh, cheeseburgers are on his list. Uh, we did, he has some chicken nugget things we cook at home that he'll eat. Uh, we go through phases with him. He does like pizza. Um, yeah. But the, the green vegetables are something that we have struggled with. We've been for years now on those Ensure flavored drinks yeah. to make sure we get all the yeah. nutrients and stuff we can get into them. Uh, so, and he's actually put on, put on a few pounds in the last we several were, yeah. months. So, uh, because for a while well, he's could... added the new food, peanut butter. Oh, yes, oh, that's true. Peanut butter and jelly. One yeah. Big deal. Yeah. yeah. The one day we made one of his sisters a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. He went over there, took it out of their hands, and ate it. And ever since then, he loves peanut butter and jelly sandwiches now. So yeah. so we've tried that with other foods. Hey, look, you want to take this stuff? <laughs> yeah. Hasn't worked with anything else. But, but it did make work with the sandwich. peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Wow. Yeah. Well, the secret is not to push him, just... Keep exposing him to all those foods at different times. Have him touch it, feel it, and not yep. necessarily eat it, and then move to the next stage, and, lick, mm. and then move on, and then you try. I mean, yes. it's I told my son. It's not a, yeah. it's not a one day, one month thing. It's a long period. But you can get those green vegetables in because he still does need it for eyesight. Mm -hmm. and oh, we skin know. Tone. So those smoothies, you know, sneak them by. Mm -hmm. I told my son that ice cream would be great. <laughs> I told my son that lettuce was leaves and broccoli were little trees and you know all the fruits were different shapes and he would he would eat them if I called them that but if not I called if not if I called them by their actual names. Yeah, and, and we don't have that communication That's the problem right that now to uh, explain that we there's, there's really, we, we have even struggled, we try first this, then that. That can be something we can sometimes utilize if it's an immediate thing. And he can see both of those options at that point, uh, and he really wants the second one. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It has never worked on food yet, but, uh, you know, sit down and put your shorts on, and then we can go outside. That kind of stuff we can sometimes. Because if, if you look at all of his things, everything has to be really bland, really plain, mm -hmm. very brownish, tannish. Yeah. And I bet you've know, already tried this. Are you familiar with the, 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 the cookbooks that are like, one's called Deceptively Delicious, and it's, a, it's a, all about pureeing a lot, because you're probably familiar with that sort of thing. Okay, and My Jessica friend. Seinfeld wrote that one. I have a copy of it. I will let you have Because, yeah. Appreciate it. We'll work on um, getting it to you yeah. sometime. I mean, it's just, um, you know, it's just, it's in there. So, so the stuff that you wanted to have is in there, but it's been pureed, and it's made to look different. Okay. Oh, yeah. That makes sense because it just has to look the right way. Yeah, it's not the, sometimes. You know, it's, yeah. It's, a, it's the look. Yeah. And, and sometimes and, it's the and texture. Also, my grandson went to preschool and for two years, every lunch, they made him his uh, bratwurst. My <laughs> goodness. Everybody else had whatever they had. He had a bratwurst. Wow. <laughs> and that's, that's all awesome. he ate. I pack a peanut butter and jelly every day. <coughs> so yes. it's. It's the accommodation of the where they are yeah. Yeah. that helps you, and they helped me, or yeah. they helped my daughter, yeah. you know, with him. And then, you know, it, she always put something on the plate and said he had to taste it. He didn't have to eat it, but he had to, you know, just taste it. And most of it he just let go because mm -hmm. it was, it was the texture. It mm -hmm. was what he couldn't couldn't eat. eat. But now he he tries all. And that's the awesome point because uh, you remember it's developmental. It's going to change as his taste buds change, as mm -hmm. they develop, mm -hmm. as his tactile senses. And you just have to keep giving him opportunities to use those senses. Mm -hmm. And then later on, he will choose what to eat. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, 
so another problem that we had, and we're still in the arc today, we talked about it, so he wants to line everything up. Structure for everything, order for everything. He is, you could probably use the word obsessed with numbers and letters because they're always perfect. They're always the same. They always go, they go like this. Um, then you get into school and they mix those letters up to make words and they mix those numbers up to make math problems. And so we had a, a growing year with that, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe that's the difference. They said this, the second year has been so amazing. First grade was so different because I think he realizes I can still put them back the way they were if I let them mm -hmm. move them around, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. um, just a lot of stuff that we do. Uh, and so we just teach colors while we're doing that. Do your numbers, but then tell me these are what color or what. So we just tried to integrate everything we could. Um, but the first thing we went after as far as therapies for him was ABA. I read and read and read, wasn't sure what I wanted to do. We had already been in speech and OT. I didn't see a lot of progress at all, but I kept going because everybody was going to think it was a bad mom if I didn't. And um, so we started with ABA, and it's we've been at the same clinic since we started, and it's so funny because they've moved several times, and we just follow them. And I was talking to the girl the other day. There's only one person left, and me from the big original. And I said, "Do you? Um, I've, I've never left you guys, so you can't leave Lexington." But when I started, I sat in the waiting room the entire time he was there because I was terrified that he can't talk, he can't this, like, what are they going to do, how is this going to work, and then I gradually sat in the car in my parking lot, in the parking lot, because he's a runner, and I was like, well, if he leaves the building, I'll know it, and I'll be able to get him, because, you know, are they watching him, I'm mm -hmm. helicopter mom to the extreme, mm -hmm. but it was just those, those settings to now, you know, to then it was, okay, I'll go to the grocery store, and I'll come right back, or I'll do whatever, and uh, now we, we trust him with our lives, but um, it has changed him, a thousand ways um, we see probably the only negative I see is that he loves always having someone with him because his whole I mean he's always had somebody right there with him a therapist or a para or whatever um, but the things that they've taught him and have been able to get out of him and the fact that he'll make eye contact now and that you know he can Yay. he's starting to speak and use um, we talked about the verbal communication so they said he would never speak the longest time we never ever heard anything um and then we would get repeated phrases from tv shows yes. and he loved the ipad so that was the reward for everything you know if you'll sit still for five minutes you get the ipad if you'll this whatever whatever it was we were trying to teach to get through life he got the ipad um and we were like he's talking he's talking and everybody was like that's not talking that's scripting that's E. Cola. That's, you know, it's like, but we can hear his voice, you know, but, and we got it. But then we started seeing those scripts, that E. Cola, whatever you want to call it, <coughs> used in real life situations. Like it, it matched. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. telling us something, mm -hmm. even though it was exactly what Dora said to Boots. Yay. It fit in this situation. So we were like, now he's talking. <coughs> See, now, no, he's still not talking. That's just scripting. It's just what he learned. Um, so, one of the things that I would encourage anybody to do wherever you are is the internet is your best friend. We're so blessed, I feel like, to live in this age where there's so much information at us and there are there's so many technological advances that our kiddos, grandkiddos can take advantage of that kids didn't have before. And so I found Life with Grayson and Parker, one of my very favorite people to follow on Facebook. She is so encouraging and she's kind of on the cutting edge. They're out of California and her son uses ProLoquo to go. It's a communication device app. My son uses it. And I kept saying, I think we should do that. I think we should do that. It's thousands of dollars. We got in the school system, and I were sitting in his IP, and I'm like, I think he needs this. I think he needs this. And um, they were like, but he doesn't have anything. I'm like, but he loves the computer, but he loves the iPad. So we said, they said, fine, we'll try it. We'll try it. We'll work on it. And I think it's a year today that we got approved for it and the verbalizations, the communication, because it models it on the iPad. So just like he hears Dora talk or Boots or Peg Plus Cat or whatever it is he's into at that time, it's talking methodically like that for him and he's responding and he's taking that and using. This weekend we heard, I want play. He's never asked us to play with him before. No. I want a sandwich. I want, we really are verbally communicating. And I'm not 
his speech people are amazing, his teachers are amazing. If they hadn't implemented it, it wouldn't be, if they weren't using it constantly, it wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. But I don't think just us would have ever broken that wall. I think that the technology made the difference. Mm -hmm. So luckily we still have that in there, even though he threw it in the fountain last week on a CBI mm -hmm. trip and destroyed it. <laughs> we're getting another one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And all the other kids were throwing they were coins. And dimes and they didn't give him. He had his coins. iPad. That's so. All he had. Oh. <laughs> so, um, he, he and 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 it's one of those. It's the same thing I said before. Whenever a good thing comes, there's always a catch because, like, he was watching the other kids. He wanted to do what they were doing. That's what we all hope for that they can interact. But he threw his iPad instead of a nickel. So, it is what it is. Um, but it's just been one trial after another and if it works we keep fighting it and if it doesn't I am the first one to leave if you can't handle my kid with autism let's go you can't you can't force the square peg into the round hole and so a lot of places that you'll go or just people you work with it might you might find a different person there they're a speech pathologist or they're an OT or they're a PT or they're this but they don't get your kiddo and so when they come out and say well, he wouldn't sit still for his speech lesson, so we couldn't do anything. Or they wouldn't, it's not the right place for you. And it's hard to walk away, and then you have to fight the insurance again, and then you have to f fight to find a new place and drive to the other side of town. But that has been our, I've tried them all, guys. Poor Mel knows. She's like, I'm out of places to tell you to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> have you tried horses for hope? We haven't. We have, um, we just haven't. And that is one well, thing that, sure he's not getting well, we're pretty sure he's allergic to pretty much all animals. So we're pretty oh. sure he's going to be allergic to them. He loves dogs more than life itself. And we thought that was going to be the greatest thing ever happened to us. So allergic. Um, but another thing that you said earlier when we were eavesdropping on your other meeting, the schedule fills up so fast. Yep. You go to school all day long, then you still want him in therapy because therapy is doing different things for him than school is doing, even though they're both great. And then you've got speech once a week and OT once a week, and you've got to fit the doctor's appointments in. And then Dr. Laro gets you into this amazing thing at UK, and then it's 7 o'clock at night, and it's over, you know? And so you have Saturdays, and you just can't overschedule them. And, mm -hmm. and plus, and most of us here have other kids, and you have to service those kids too, mm -hmm. and it just gets overwhelming. And you have to work. Oh, yeah, and we both work. <laughs> we both work. So, um, and this is by no means a commercial for Fayette County Public Schools. To be transparent, we do both work for Fayette County Public oh. Schools, um, but we do believe in them. We do think that they have changed our son's life for the better. Um, because we both work in them, we both see really bad things too. So fight, be yeah. in there, go to the meetings, say no. If you don't like how it feels, don't do it. But if you can find the right people, and we are so blessed to have a fabulous team around him, um, which was a complete freak accident, but it worked out. Um, it's, it's made all the difference. For what us. Was now? He's seven. Seven. So he's in he did half day kindergarten the first year. And uh, we would I would pick him up and he would go to ABA because you know I couldn't give up that control yet. I couldn't have him all day. And then um, so we repeated kindergarten. They said let's do full day. And that second year, that was another one of my fights. They had so we go to register him for kindergarten and they say your school's full. We live across the street from an elementary school oh, that our children went to. And they said, your school's ouch. full. You can't go to the school. I have a daughter here right now. Oh, no, no, kindergarten's full. You can't come here. No. This is all we know. So you, they're building a brand new school. I don't think it's done yet, but you're going to go to that school. So I called Dave, and I'm like, you better fix this. Because at that point, I didn't work in Fayette County yet. And he did. And he's like, I can't fix that. You're going to have to go up there. So I went over there. The principal was amazing. She shows me this room. She's like, she meets Jacob because he's with me because I'm registering for kindergarten. He's going to be in this, this MSD room. That's moderate to severe disabilities. He'd be a perfect fit for this room. They all have paraeducators. He'll have someone with him because I'm terrified he's going to run away or he's going to bite someone or whatever. Um, and I just felt this peace about school. I'm like, this lady gets me. She's so nice. She knows where we're going to be. This is safe. Uh, we go back for our ARC and they were like, he just has autism. 
He doesn't get to be in this room. This is for kids with severe needs. <coughs> yeah, he doesn't <coughs> communicate. He doesn't know. No, that's not how it works. Least restrictive environment. If you've heard that at an IEP, or you will hear it at an IEP. So the government says least restrictive environment. They have to be in the place that is the least restrictive to them. So they said that was the regular education classroom. This is at the new building. building yeah, the new school. Been pull out to the so we would pull out with a special education mm -hmm. teacher. So in my mind, I'm going, so you're going to take him in here, then you're going to take him out of here, and then you're going to mm -hmm. take him back in here, and then he's going to go, and that was it. And so I just couldn't, I couldn't, it didn't feel right to me, and um, we luckily had an appointment at UK. Dr. Lara was our doctor, and I said, I don't like this. I don't, I don't know how it's going to work, and he said, well, let's try half day, because everybody really wanted him in school. If I would just let go and get him in school, it could help, but I couldn't do it. So we did half day, and then he went to ABA, and it was just a fight, guys. It was a fight to get him to school, principal call in, he hit this kid, he did whatever. Well, he's sitting in center with 25 other kids, and he has no idea what's going on. Um, so I fought all year long to today he's in that MSD room and it's so it's exhausting and get a good support system around you or call me and I'll call you back because you just that's all we've learned is just to keep fighting like it if the gut feels right and just keep fighting go to the top yeah just my keep, daughter mm -hmm. called Frankfurt yeah so and once you did that things change, change don't they it changes very very quickly because she was running into the same, same problem. problem, and she came to the meeting with everything prepared. First she called Frankfurt, then she called Fayette County downtown, mm -hmm. and then she went to the meeting. Right. you got to have and all we'll your ducks in a row, and then once they realize you can have all your ducks in a row, things start falling into place. Um, so now we're on the end of year two of being <coughs> in this MSD room with a para with CBI trips, which is community-based instruction, which has been life-changing mm. because they practice going out to eat in a restaurant. They practice cooking group, wow. which is part of the sandwich situation because they had it, he had already been exposed to it. They had made sandwiches in class, or last week he tried a bite of grilled cheese. He spit it out, but he put it in his mouth. You know, so there's a lot of things. Um, she brings in the Allegro Dance Project, and they dance with him, which mm -hmm. he loves to dance and music. Um, so just different, he's exposed to so much more than we can offer since we need to work. Um, so it's just been a blessing to have that team of support with his OT speech and music. Oh, you, you do have music therapy. Yeah. We I was going to ask you if you had yeah, it. We, have, um, mm -hmm. we started off paying for it, um, working with Austin on the move. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you don't do music therapy and he usually does camps. I haven't seen it up yet, but he does summer camps and it <coughs> is phenomenal. Austin and we Robinson. figured out, um, yeah, Austin Robinson, that Jacob could communicate through music before he could communicate. Even with the Ecola, he would sing his ABCs. He would sing a song where he couldn't speak it, but he could sing it. Um, and our music therapist told us today we're going to up to 30 minutes a week because he's doing so well. So yeah, so um, it was a fun arc, but it has been to get to Jacob is it's exciting. So, uh, Crystal talked about how finding, um, what was her name, the blog that you were talking about? Life with Grayson and Parker. Yeah, Life with Grayson and Parker. I kind of went the other way and found the autism daddy who hmm. you probably have seen on there. And, and he was, he didn't hold anything back or say yes. anything was, you know, wonderful and stuff, which I... It, it worked for me pretty well. I, I, I like to read a lot of that stuff, especially on the days when everybody says everything's going to be okay and uh, read this a lot is of that. Easy. Yeah. Uh. So, uh, so uh, one thing uh, I don't really remember how I, we got into the conversation with Melanie about this one time, but I've had a blog for technology for a while now, and I just decided to use a little bit of it to kind of mm -hmm. talk uh, uh, autism. One of the things that we did differently last year than we have ever done is we were, we went to the beach every year for several years in a row to this place, Top Sail in North Carolina, which back then when we first started, nobody knew where it was, and now it keeps getting on all these top ten lists. We're like, no, that was a secret place. And nobody knew about it. So, but the thing about it was, and in the mix of about eight years of doing that, we tried Myrtle Beach in the middle, and we're like, no way, that place is too much going on. Top Sail, you could see the whole beach. I mean, if Jacob ran off, you just saw where he went. There was nobody else there. It was great. And last year, we decided to try something a little bit differently. It was like, okay, the girls really wanted to go to Florida, and so we decided to go to SeaWorld and Discovery Cove and try those places down there. 
And one thing I find real nice when you're trying to look at these different amusement parks and such to go to is to do some research online about what people, not what the company is telling you is but their autism people. or their special needs policies. What have people done that have actually gone there? So I went and wrote two of them up from, from our experience. From the, so, <coughs> excuse me. I wrote one up for SeaWorld and Discovery Co. because I was finding this information out from other parents who went and did the same thing, so I'm kind of trying to pay it forward a little bit on, on what we've uh, done. We had really good experiences at, at both places. Um, so uh, I've written those two up in there. One place that we went to uh, one year uh, before that was in, uh, we went to Thomas, uh, saw Thomas the Train at Tweetsie's Railroad, which is in North Carolina. And, kids uh, a train lover. It's yeah, the place and, to go. And Jacob absolutely loves loves trains. They line up in a nice straight line, which probably has something a good bit to yeah. do with it. But the one thing I wrote this one up for is the main thing we did right before we went is we bought this harness, and that was because at that time Jacob was not good at hand holding, and he was really good at the same thing all of our kids were. The I'm not going anywhere. I'm going limp right now, or I'm fighting pulling out your hands. And we knew this place was going to be crazy busy. So one, either he was going to, if we try to try to force him to do something and not let him walk, he might go limp on us. Or if he took off and got away, we knew he could dart through the crowd a lot faster than we did. So, uh, you know, if you read online about people, uh, one, there are people that just buy the backpacks and they had the little string on them and stuff. And, and they're it's cute and they're good for the it. little kids and stuff. Oh. And I was like, no, I want need one that's going to hold real, really well. So I actually, uh, there's... Uh, I forget her name, but it, it's in all this. But uh, there's a woman in uh, in Canada that makes these because she has ch a child with autism. And uh, anyway, the harness goes on. It was real comfortable for him, and we had a lead and stuff. And so we were able to let him lead us around wherever he wanted to go without him feeling con confined about where where actually he was going to get to go. We, we bought were, one of the harnesses yeah. from her. Did you? You can ask her for business cards and give them out to people. Oh, well, that's great. Yeah. So that's a front shot uh, of it, but that worked out. Worked out really well for us. Yeah, yeah, it was a little warm, but man, he, he, had, a, he had a blast when we were there. Uh, since then, and you know, we go back and forth on things a lot, so he is, right now, he's really good about holding hands, and we've been able to uh, walk pr walk pretty well that way. So so hopefully that, that will continue, but just time, in case that it's was not. essential, and if it is for you, it, it changed. We all had a better day because we had that, and there were several experiences we got to have because we had that. That harness. And McDonald's probably doesn't get many, hey, thanks a lot, McDonald's, so I wrote a story up for them about how, how Jacob eats his cheeseburgers and, and enjoys it so much. But uh, one other thing that we started doing uh, two years ago with school is because Jacob was going to go into the school and we knew that he wasn't going to communicate with everybody, it was going to take a little bit of time for the teachers to actually get to know him, to get, and especially people who did OT with him, did speech with him, they get the C. Yeah, bus drivers. So uh, we started doing. Uh, oh, so so we started doing these flyers, and this was the one of when he was five when he started. We put it up there, put a picture of him, and we put little things into it about what I can do and things that I like, so that immediately whenever they interacted with Jacob, they knew a few things that they could touch on right away that would have Jacob's interests. Or, or know things that he wasn't interested in, especially put things on there about uh, food and stuff that, that he likes. And then, uh, like I said, last year, this was a six-year-old one that we sent to school, and he actually got to uh, wow. pet a dolphin when he was out wow. there and he enjoyed that. And, um, but it, it, and we've had a lot of uh, feedback from teachers saying, this is fantastic, thank you so much for doing this. So it's definitely something we, should, we plan to continue on doing, uh, and it's just a great way for us to be able to introduce Jacob to folks without us actually being there when, uh, when we're trying to explain all that to them. And just like I was saying earlier, sometimes he is a hard kid to connect with, so it immediately gave them something to be able to talk to him about, or to yeah. be able to identify with him about, um, that worked for mm -hmm. them. And that did steal that with, from Life with Chris and Parker. It's yep. not an original idea. Mm -hmm. I heard y'all, uh, we talked earlier autism. about hey. the autism walk <laughs> last year. <laughs> And he actually did give him a big hug. Jacob thought it was he great. Loves the and oh, Jacob cool. loves numbers. And there's the 10 yard line, the 20 yard line. Oh, he and I were he running up down yeah. the field like crazy. I was like, this is unbelievable. This, 
Jacob has no appreciation for where we are right now, <laughs> but he is loving counting these numbers every 10 yards. That's so we That's ran up and down I've that a lot of times. That, that was so much fun that day. Um, and how was how's the noise for him? He didn't seem to... Yeah, well, on the field and stuff, it's a little bit when we were underneath in the yeah. tunnels, yeah. Yeah, he didn't like that at all. So yeah. we kind of got out of there after a while and, and went out we here and kind of waited. Yeah. And we up, he liked just sitting in the bleachers and looking around too. So we did that some too. But he didn't care for um, all the people in the little enclosed mm -hmm. areas. We there. probably should consider putting our sensory area, if it's not raining, like out. Side, so it doesn't mm -hmm. like at the end of the end zone. And, but yeah. the nice thing here with this is, if we do a tent, it won't we can make our. There's enough places to go. I mean, <coughs> that's what yes. was perfect about yeah, that. Yeah, like, okay, we just need to get away from everybody a little bit, yeah. and we found yeah. you know, we found our own spots to be able to go out to. So well, any problem? But uh, you know, Jacob is pretty entertaining. You never know what he's going to do. Uh, uh, he got him all dressed uh, for bread, and he. Uh, <laughs> We've since learned, Every and we've had, to, we've had to convince sisters of this too. Oh. Never leave water in the tub because <laughs> seems like a natural thing. Just, but for some reason, it happens in our house. <laughs> yeah, and, and Jacob isn't big on cause and effect. Like he just thought, "Hey, that looks like fun. I'm going to sit hey, there, love jump in there." Yeah, uh, you know, he, we were sitting in a parking lot, and I didn't have the windows locked. And he rolled down his window and threw his iPad out the other day, and that's how he cracked that one. And oh, like, no, in two days. Oh. Cool. And so uh, it's like, you know, now you don't have it. And he sat there and said, no iPad. And I was like, nope, you know. This is, it's perfect. It's, but it, if you it, notice, it, that's even a sensory issue because it looked fun, but then once his pajamas were wet on him, it was like, oh, yeah, like, you know, no, he just locked up terrible. and, no, and didn't doing? know what to do. <laughs> but uh, you could plug them because they were amazing. Yeah, Discovery yeah. Cove huh. was uh, really amazing that, they didn't give us any problem whatsoever. And, Let him uh, do whatever he wanted to do. As long as we were with him, he was supervised, that sort of thing. It was and it was really amazing. I'm oh, not going to wow. mention where we went, but since we talked about the sensory-friendly event stuff, I I am a big believer on oh. if you're going to call, you don't. Your company does not have to do anything to meet the needs of my child if you don't want to. I just won't come see you. But if you're going to say it's a sensory event, it needs to be something. And we went to one, and I couldn't, I mean, I've been in this place before. Different. I couldn't was figure out what was, it was in Lexington. And I couldn't figure out what was anything different. And, um, and uh, I'm not going to get into much more. But even, I was trying to help my son, and you could do it for free if you were helping a child, or you were supposed to pay otherwise. And somebody came up to me and told me I was supposed to be paying. I'm like, Basically to the point, do you really think I'm having a good time right now? I'm trying to keep <laughs> chase him around. So one of the ones so. that they talked about? Uh, I, we didn't hear that part, so okay. I don't know. Okay. So, but that's right. one thing I just hope that companies know that if they are going to commit to it, they really need to understand Your what they're committing to. Your staff needs to be trained to some point. Because yeah. we do feel that. We, we want the world to be inclusive for mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. um, luckily, I get to work with kids and talk about that every day and, and treat your peers the same way. And our girls are very involved in both of their schools, helping with kids and wanting them to have the same life. But we know right now we're not there, we might not get there. So we try not to force ourselves on things. But if you're going to say, let's do this, you better be ready because we're coming. Like, if you have something. Yeah. Um, that's why I want to shout out to SeaWorld and... Um, Discovery Cove because Kings Island's the same way if you've been there. They say they have a, a process, but it is torturous and painful because you only can ride a ride every 45 minutes. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> what do you do in those in between when the ride is two minutes long? Mm -hmm. You know, you can get to the front of the line, but every 45 minutes. So it's just, um, you know, situational things. Luckily, yeah. we have trains, so we just rode the train. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we love firehouses and stuff too. We've been to Shout pretty much Maple every Leaf. one the last couple of years that goes on in Harrisburg Road. Uh, this one was at Maple Leaf the other day. Uh, <laughs> the, the other little boy that's in this calls Jacob his best friend, which we just love to death. And, oh, and, uh, and you know, and and he's actually holding Jacob there. Oh. There's other pictures too where he's actually holding him to keep him up there for the photo. <laughs> Jacob. And, uh, Be my best friend. and Jacob's pretty good about just letting him. All right. Well, you know, if you're telling them, tell me what to do, I'll I'll do it. So, and the best thing they loved about this is while they were there checking out all the uh, all the fires, uh, they got they got called out to a call, 
So then they had all stepped back against the wall, which you'd think would be a bad thing, but they lit up the trucks and the sirens and stuff. Because they had stuff. to pull out. And uh, Jacob, he's, he oh, does do gosh. the flapping stuff, but not all that much, but he went he nuts flight. when that thing lit up and went out the door. Uh, so so he, they yeah, absolutely they had an awesome they time. Loved that You're familiar bit. with the Autism Safety Day that they do at the one out Harrisburg Road. Right? Yes. Yeah, it's yeah, coming we up. We always hit yep. that yep. one. Yep. We'll May, 11. Okay. Okay. Um, May 11th. May 11th. 11 yeah, two. Yeah. But um, that was the little boy's birthday party. So that's the first birthday party Jacob's ever gone to wow. in his whole life. That is his best friend from his <gasps> MSD class at school. Yeah. Oh, it's really cool oh that they had gosh. the birthday party at a fire station. Yeah. And that the little boy neat. said, I want a birthday party and I just want to bring Jacob. And his parents were like, let's so, do this. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, that worked, worked out really good. So. Did you have one? To go so home? I was going to add about waiting in line. We, like, last year we went to Florida and took our son with us. And uh, when we got to Atlanta, we, we asked a, one of the persons there with a the walkie talkie. said, we have a special new son. Can we get the, you know, some special help to get him to the scanner? The, last time. the so airport. Very happy. That's wow. fantastic. The person who came was really great. Eye contact and called his name numerous times and mimicked his behavior when he was supposed to be in the scan. Mm -hmm. So I'd highly recommend that. Mm -hmm. That is fantastic. Yes, and we um, missed, but I know the airport thing they did. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. We want to be here too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mean, here. Um, we're just not sure if we could get him off the plane. Because <laughs> that's another one of those things he loves oh. a lot. Are you familiar with the, the train museum in New Haven? They do Thomas Tank Engine mm -hmm. stuff too. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we go to Versailles. They've yes. got the little museum yeah, and the trailer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We've cool. been to Entertainment Junction once, but he didn't make another trip up there. He thought that was. Yeah, where's that? Do one? It. Oh, in uh, north of Cincinnati. Yeah. Oh. It's worth it's a, the drive, though. But Ooh. you basically you start all. It's all mod, It's the largest model <laughs> railroad in the U.S. Yep. I believe it's all indoors and it's wow. a couple stories high wow. and you start off in the early time period of the trains and as it goes around you walk these paths and stuff it progresses into later technology and at the whole time the lights that you, you cover days like the lights will go dark and then it will light back up and, and wow. you're covering days as you're walking through it. but really the only sound is the so it's sensory yeah, you it's the trains, all you hear so. is the just the train wheels going so it's really neat that was a fun day. We've uh, winter time is a tough time for us for him to get his air entertainment, so we turned our garage into a bounce house one winter, and that that worked out fairly well. But one thing that Jacob's always been good at is is spelling uh, the words he wants to spell, and he would do it with these phone things, and he learned a lot of this from Word World. Uh, we realized with the first thing we ever saw him uh, spell was uh, guitar. And we thought, wow. it was about three. where do you learn to wow. spell guitar? And, it, and, and sure enough, we're, we're, you know, puts those letters and stuff right on the screen. Uh, if, you, if you haven't tried it yet, and, uh, the PBS Kid app is fantastic. Hmm. They have both the video app and they have the Games. game app. All of it's completely free. There's no advertisements or whatever, and it's completely kid-friendly. Uh, yeah. of, of how to maneuver that. So, yes, but like running on an iPad yeah. to be able to get maneuver, he has no problem with that whatsoever. Uh, YouTube put out a kids version of, of it, but Jacob kind of tried YouTube before that, so by that time when he looked at the kids version, he's like, I'm not messing with this. But one little tip on YouTube, he can't type and search for anything, but it's amazing what he can find. And you, I mean, it's kind of credit to YouTube too in the fact of being able to predict what people want to watch next. But one thing I've done on like our phones and his iPad and stuff is created an account for him, a Google account, that we're signed into on all of our devices. So if he finds, because this happens a lot, he will find a video and he wants to watch it again, but we might get one word about what that is and trying to find out what that is like is duck. tough. However, how do you find the yeah. duck? You know. But since it's signed in on all of ours, we have the history on yeah. all of ours and can easily flip between each one of them. So, and that's a you know anybody can do that for completely free. That's mm. that's a pretty. The duck easy. song is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> He was talking about the duck, the train called Duck on Thomas the Train. Oh, yeah. But yeah, really to get to it. that point, buddy, that was that was a rough one. Oh. So but here he goes. His daughter, his sisters have uh, picked up the you. So he's got this new uh, obsession with looking himself in yes. the mirror when he does stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you've ever seen Peg Plus Cat, she plays the ukulele in there. His sisters are big into the ukulele now, so. So now he's becoming a ukulele star, uh, too. But if you'll notice here, too, he ABAs us. Yes, he does. Now. Hilarious. He does it 
and we have to do it Hilarious. because that's how he's learned everything. You do it, I do it, you do it. So now I'm trying to sing. He wants it high, and, uh -huh. and so I can't sing high, so because that's how it sounds there. But yeah, so yeah. that was that was the turning point this winter when he was like, he is interacting with me, and he realizes I realize that he wants me to do what he's doing. It was one of those like, who video it because the whole world needs to see. <laughs> yeah. Kind of thing. Uh, the, the one thing I just wanted to say too is we appreciate groups like this to be able to come to and be able to talk with others who share similar experiences because I even wrote a post up one day of that iPad there on the green uh, on the right hand side because he was watching this door video and he was in the tub and I had and this was a while back and we were having Winter a hard time hard. keeping him Winter in the tub so we propped up the iPad and he would not stay in the tub and kept getting out and I was like Jacob you gotta stay in the tub Finally, I just let him go to the iPad. He took the iPad, turned it upside down, set it back down, and then got back in the tub. All he cared about was that the iPad was sitting this way as opposed to sitting the other way. Which, he just wanted the you button think about the home buttons on one side versus the other. It affected the video not in the least bit, but there's so many, and I'm sure you guys all have stories too, there's so many of those nitpicky little things that you try and figure out, you're like, Wait, the cheeseburgers made upside down. I mean, yes. who think that's a big deal? But it, it's just, I mean, some of the stuff you just got to laugh at. But uh, uh, he, uh, he has taught us a, a lot. We um, knew very little about autism before we, we had Jacob. And uh, we probably still know very little bit about it. <laughs> yeah, but, we know about him. Yes, <laughs> we know, yeah, and that's one thing we definitely know is if you know it, you see these posts all the time. If you know a kid with autism, you know one kid with autism. You don't right. know anybody exactly. else. So it's, it's really amazing the differences. Um, That's it. People, you know, people I'm ask boring. for advice or, or we talk. We talk to groups or we talk here. Yeah. And we're happy to tell you what worked great for Jacob. But, you know, we're not saying that might work great for your kid. But we'll help you in any way you can um, with different resources or things we've tried. Or we have tried a lot of things. We have a lot of arcs or We've had our share of fights with insurances. We've had our times yeah, where the insurance changed over to a different company, and we started over with the fight. Uh, uh, we actually just recently got on the Michelle P. Waiver now. Five years on um, the waiting list, but so we're So we, we got that, which um, really expect to help him later on uh, a good bit. So far, it's a lot of work. It's yeah, a lot right of now meetings, it's, a, it's a, lot of, a lot of meetings and stuff. And we've been, we've been blessed in the fact that we have good insurance, so we've been able to do the ABA and that kind of stuff out of insurance and paying out of pocket the rest of the, yeah. you know, the, the, uh, the, the family maximum. Uh, people at work say, well, which plan do you use? I was like, I just hit the family maximum every year. It's like, <laughs> we don't really have a plan. Which, which, which one's the best one? Like, whichever one charges you less when, for the maximum you can pay all year. So uh, we've benefited from that, uh, being able to have an ABA and stuff. So we're not using the waiver so much for that kind of stuff, but he's not even, he's not potty trained, um, so, uh, got a case of diapers, yes, yeah, so we got a case of diapers, <laughs> yeah. so far that's been our labor claim to fame, that's right, <laughs> so, but, um, really that's, that's all that's we, our life. that's our life, that's, uh, kind of what we're, we're, we're doing and, and taking care of things, so we appreciate you letting us speak this evening, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I, I think a lot of your suggestions,